Hi friends, welcome to my channel Focusing FreeCAD. Today I want to work on exercise 87 from studycadcam.com. I will be using FreeCAD 1.0 version to build this model. In there, I will build the model on Part Design Workbench. We have the technical drawing available to us, so we will use that to help us during sketching. For that purpose, the technical drawing needs to be processed. First part is to calibrate the length. I want to pick the largest dimension available on the drawing for calibration. Use left mouse button to click on both ends, and then type in the distance it is supposed to be, then hit enter. That's all about length calibration on image processing. While we are on this window, let's make it half transparent. We want to leave the image on XY plane and hit OK. Now we want to move the image to a suitable location with respect to the center of the workspace. To see where the center of the three space is, go to View and click on Toggle Axis Cross, or we can use a keyboard shortcut, press it and see at the same time to view or hide the axis cross. We can see that out object has a center hole somewhere in the middle. So my personal preference is to move the center of that hole to the origin. Right click on the image on the left panel and hit transform. Now use the provided arrows to move the image. Update the translation increment value to a smaller one for a finer control on the movement. Once you are happy with the image's location, click OK to exit out of this operation. That was the whole purpose of axis cross. Now we can take it away. Hit a plus C on the keyboard. First step to build any 3D model is to draw a sketch first. To do that, we want to use the Create Sketch button on the toolbar. We want the sketch our XY plane and press OK. Now we are in the sketch editing mode. We see that our object is symmetric by the horizontal axis, so we will only build half of the object and then later mirror it over on the other side. I will use Paul Line to draw the boundary to begin with. Paul Line has multiple modes of edges available to draw. We can use left click to set a vertex and then press the M key on the keyboard to find the desired mode of edge that we want to draw. Be mindful about the center hole that we want to address in the sketch. In the sketch, we will address these gaps later The Paul line has this normal constraint that I don't like, so I will select Delete that and then apply a different set of constraints in there. Let's take these two disconnected points and make them one by hitting C on the keyboard. Do the same for the center of the arc and the origin. Now, I see the left edge is not completely vertical, so I will select that and hit V on the keyboard. That will make the edge vertical. So, the outline of the sketch is done. If we hide the technical drawing, we can see the progress of sketching more clearly. The next step is to apply some dimensional constraints. The width of the total object is 150 millimeter. Half of that would be 75. Select the vertical edge on the right side and hit D on the keyboard. Left click somewhere to accept the auto suggested dimension mode, enter 75 and hit OK. While the dimension tool active, let's apply the radius constraint to the corner arc and the center arc. The rightmost vertex is 120 millimeter away from the origin, and the left vertex is 80 millimeter away from the origin. Now we can see all the edges are turned green, which means this is a fully constrained sketch. While drawing a sketch in FreeCAD, we need to make sure we are drawing for one selectable area only. We have only one selectable area close by lines and arcs. We want to pad or extrude this two-dimensional sketch to a three-dimensional object. I want to use the pad button on the toolbar. We want to pad it for 18 times to a millimeter height. From the preview, we can see the pad is going upward, but we want it to go the other way. So select reversed. The preview is now updated. It OK to complete the operation. We have half of the base object created. Now let's focus on the surface depression feature. On the technical drawing, we can see that the perpendicular distance between the edges are given as 10 mm. The slope of the side is not provided, only the perpendicular distance. That means we will have to create two sketches at the top and bottom of this depression. Use those two sketches to make a 3 shape and then cut it out from the base object. I want to draw the top sketch or XY plane following the technical drawing. Create a sketch or XY plane and trace the outer boundary. I will be using the Paul line to do that. 
because this sketch will be used to cut things down, I don't want to worry about the center hole. I can see that the center of the arc will be at the origin. Select these two points and hit C on the keyboard. The radius of this arc is 40 millimeter. The middle arc is 25 millimeter. The angle between these two edges is 75 degrees. Select these two edges and hit D on the keyboard. The smart dimension will provide an option for the angle constraint. This vertex is 40 millimeter away from the horizontal axis. The rightmost vertex is 120 millimeter away from the origin. And that, my friend, is a fully constrained sketch. Let's go ahead and rename that as SKS Top. The second sketch will be at 15 millimeter below the XY plane, but we will adjust that elevation later. For now, let's go ahead and build the sketch right here on XY plane. On this sketch, we can take help from the previous sketch, because the previous sketch is almost the same as this one. Let me hide this technical drawing for a minute. Maybe hide this pad too, for a better understanding of what is going on. Now we only want the sketch top as a reference to draw the current sketch. Click on the carbon copy tool and go to the model window where we can find the tree and click on sketch top. One click and that copies Everything on the new sketch, what it does that it also references all the dimensional constraints is link constraints. If you see this FX symbol next to a constraint, it indicates that the constraint has an expression or formula in there. This 40 will not be valid on the sketch, so let's go ahead and delete that. We want to move this edge inside, and this perpendicular distance between the two inclined edges will be 10 millimeter. I want to take this point as a reference using the external reference tool. Maybe I want to take the edges an external reference as well. Now select these two edges and hit D on the keyboard. That will give us an option for the perpendicular distance between the two edges, and we want to say this is 10 millimeter. Another way to update a link constraint is to clear the formula from there. Notice that we cannot change this 25 to 35 because it is coming from an expression. So we want to clear the expression and then provide our new value as desired. This 40 will be 30. So we clear the expression and provide our new value. There, that is our new sketch, fully constrained. I see. A couple of values still contains link values. They can stay like that, close to come out of sketch edit mode. Let's rename the sketch. I want to bring the pad back. Now, I want to push this mid sketch down by 15 millimeter. Select the sketch, go to attachment properties on the data tab, expand position under attachment offset. We want to make the Z value as minus 15. Remember that these X, Y, Z values are local coordinates. They do not follow the global coordinates all the time. If you want to push a sketch to its perpendicular direction, you will have to update Z value only. All right, now we have both sketches where they should be. We want to make a three object between these two sketches and then cut it out from the base pad. Both of those steps can be done in one operation called subtractive loft. Select these two sketches and hit the subtractive loft button. The preview shows how much material will be cut out. A reddish color indicates a subtractive operation. If you like what you see, hit OK to accept the operation. And that is our half object. Now we will have to create the smooth circular edges, which we can do by using the fillet operation. Take these two edges from the side and hit fillet. We want an 18 millimeter radius fillet on this 36 millimeter edge. However, in FreeCut, a fillet or a chamfer cannot consume the whole edge it is working on. That is why I want a close enough fillet of 17.99 millimeter radius. There it is. That is our half object except some slots on the side. We could have included these slots in our first sketch. However, I wanted to leave them for a later operation on purpose. I want to showcase the parametric capability of FreeCAD software with this operation. 
from freak at one version a new variable tool is available on the global toolbar called varset this is a dynamic data field the varset does similar thing as a spreadsheet but in a much better way let's go ahead a create a varset for the first variable let's go ahead and apply a name i will keep that in the base group we are planning to use this variable to indicate how many slots we will create so the type of the field will be integer number for now, let's provide 3 as the value of this field. On the left panel, now you can see the var set is available on the tree. The variable slot number is also accessible from the left panel. Because we want to control the number of slots via this var set variable, we want to build only one slot. And then we will use a linear pattern to create as many slots as we need. So let's draw another sketch on XY plane. And here, our sketch will be a simple rectangle. Let's apply some dimensional constraints to this rectangle. The top right point is 75 millimeter away from the horizontal axis. The bottom right vertex is 104 divided by 2 millimeter away from the horizontal axis. The width of the rectangle is 15 millimeter. The slot is 20 millimeter away from the base object edge. We can get that edge as a reference from the original sketch. make that sketch visible from the tree. If it is difficult to see, hide the technical drawing. We still in the sketch editing mode. Now we use the external reference tool to bring in the right edge in our current sketch. Now make a linear constraint between the right edge of the active sketch and the right edge of the body. That makes our slot sketch fully constrained. Rename the sketch for easy identification. Now select the sketch and hit pocket from the toolbar. You can see it's pocketing it downward, which is good. We want to take this pocket through the whole object. That is our first slot. Now I want to replicate that three more times. I want to select the pocket and select linear pattern from the toolbar. And here, first update the pattern direction. We want to pattern in the global X direction. And then we want to select offset for the month. Because we know from the technical drawing, the slots are 15 millimeter wide, 20 millimeter apart. Offset allows us to provide those values in there. Let's hide technical drawing. Now update the offset value as 15 plus 20 millimeter. We still do not see anything on the preview. Maybe because it is going to the right side. Let's reverse the direction. Now we can see something. We see two slots appeared. We want to make three slots. Uh, we want to pull this occurrence value from the var set we created earlier. So click on the expression button. And here I start typing var set. Select var set from available suggestions. The dot comes as part of the expression. Now from available fields. We want to select slot number. Check the result and hit OK. Now, the number of slots is linked with the varsa variable. It's okay to accept the pattern. Hide the top sketch to take it out of our way. Let's see if the varset is working. Update the slot number to different values and see how it is reflected on the body. This varset is a dynamic data field, which makes it faster than the spreadsheet. Every time we want to change a spreadsheet value, the object gets hidden by the spreadsheet. If you want to see the model, the spreadsheet goes away. To see both of those, you will have to share the screen with the two. Varset does not have this extra hassle in it. You can update Varset values from the left panel while the model staying visible in the thread space. This makes Varset much more user friendly than the spreadsheet. Now that we have half of our body built, let's mirror it over on the other side. Select all operations from the tree and hit mirror from the toolbar. Update the mirror plane to base XC, which is the global XC lane. And then select Transform Body. Now we can see the mirror body in the preview. If you like what you see, click OK to accept the mirror operation. Now let's see if Varset is doing us any good. Select the slot number from the Data tab under Varset. Change the value and see if the changes is translated over in the body. 
It works, my friend. In this video, I showed how to draw, a sketch, and how to build a model using symmetry and patterns. Above all, I wanted to show how to use Varset to easily change an object as we see fit. I hope you like the way I described the process. I hope you like the video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding this model or channel in general, please let them in the comment section below. And thank you for watching. I hope to see you in one of my next videos then.